The speaker view on the upper right hand corner will give you the focus on uh, the speaker or the gallery view on everyone. Thanks for joining together this morning as we hear the word of God in order to strengthen our spirits and keep holy the Lord's day. Uh, those who are joining us from outside our parish or outside the area, know that you're welcome and embraced by our community as you honor us by your presence. You know the phrase, it's a mixed bag. We use it when we wanna describe a situation that has both good and bad sides to it, or to describe a person who has multiple dimensions, positive and negative. Even a pandemic is a mixed bag. It has forced the world and its people to slow down, families to share more time together, the air to be cleaner and clearer with less fewer vehicles polluting the atmosphere, even as it has ended jobs for millions, taken precious lives, disrupted commerce, and created universal anxiety. Jesus acknowledges the presence of opposites in our world, the weeds and the wheat, the fishing net dragging in bad stuff and good. His word encourages us to discern the difference and hold on to the good, trusting that God is good and the good will prevail. I wanna thank Rosie Maghetto and her son Joey for leading our spoken prayers. And those of you at home will join in the, the prayers and the psalm refrain. We'll begin with a prelude, but I wanna say a word about it uh, before we listen to it as we enter into worship. The hymn is entitled, It Is Well With My Soul. It's a very popular hymn in Protestant settings. And it was written in 1876 by a man named Horatio Spafford. He wrote it after he experienced several tragedies in his life, heartbreaking tragedies. His four-year-old son died. Uh, he witnessed the Chicago fire of of 1871. He was a wealthy lawyer, but he lost his fortune in that fire. His wife and four daughters were crossing the Atlantic on a ship, and there was a collision with another seafaring vessel, and only his wife survived. He faced so many tragedies in his life, not unlike our current situation of this uh, universal pandemic, one of the verses of his hymn sings this, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let the words of this hymn lead us into a spirit of prayer. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, like a string of fine pearls, Jesus offers us a series of parables, lovely images that both conceal and reveal the treasures of God's kingdom. We're invited to recognize God's grace and action in the world, even in the midst of the struggles that are confronting us. Once we discover the treasure of God's kingdom, nothing can take it from us. Let us seek mercy for the times we have neglected to recognize the presence of God's light in our midst of darkness and failed to give witness to Christ, the light of the world. Jesus, Son of God, your word is more precious than silver and gold. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Jesus, true light, your teaching is a lamp for our feet. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, glory of the Father, your gospel is the treasure of our souls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of eternal wisdom, you alone impart the gift of right judgment. Give us an understanding heart that we may value wisely the treasure of your kingdom and gladly forego all lesser gifts to possess that kingdom's incomparable joy. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If God said to you, I'll give you anything you want, what would you ask for? Mm -hmm. At this moment in time, I think most of us would ask for the discovery of a vaccine and an end to the pandemic. King Solomon, offers us a suggestion in our Old Testament reading about what we might seek from God. I invite Jared Riley to deliver our first scripture for us. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me, your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, 
but for an understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you request. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will be, or, and after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. My part I resolved, O oh Lord, is to obey your word. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Lord, I love your commands. Let your love be ready to console me by your promise to your servant. Let your love come and I shall live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. That is why I love your commands more than finest gold. Why I rule my life by your precepts and hate false ways. Lord, I love your commands. Your will is wonderful indeed, therefore I obey it. The unfolding of your word gives light and teaches the simple. Lord, I love your commands. Do you wonder every day about how this whole pandemic will turn out? The uncertainty has put so much pressure on each of us and our families. The word of God is reassuring, especially during times like these. I invite Marty Ruane to deliver the epistle. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. After God made that decision of what his children should look like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then, after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And with, your spirit. and with your spirit. A reading from the good news according to Matthew. Glory to you, Glory o Lord. To you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again. 
and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And Jesus replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storehouse both the new and the old. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Praise you, to Lord you, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. A few weeks ago at one of our uh, town hall uh, Wednesday gatherings, uh, we began the discussion and reflection on racism in our country and how we can combat it even in our own uh, lives and own communities. Um, at that time, uh, Dr. Mary Olowen from our parish gave us an introduction and she contrasted uh, racism with kinship that desire to be united with others and to find commonality, to find our unity as human beings. A wonderful word, uh, kinship. And that can only happen when we begin to listen to one another. So I've invited Mary uh, to open for us today's uh, powerful scriptures. Thank you, Father John. For the last few Sundays, we've been hearing about fields, seeds sown in a field, weeds sown among the good seed, fields of rocky ground with little soil, fields of rich soil. The kingdom of God is the seed, and a field of good soil brings it to fruition. This Sunday, we heard that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in the field. Who buries treasure in a field? It could be someone on the run who expects to be able to return and reclaim their treasure. Or Jews in Holland in 1940, anticipating being rounded up and sent to Germany, buried the family silver in the back garden. This act was an act of hope they were hopeful that they would one day return. So treasure buried in a field can be a sign of hope. And who finds treasure in a field? An explorer, someone who seeks, someone wandering who trips over the treasure accidentally, seemingly by chance, someone who digs deep, going beyond and below the surface, seeking understanding. The person who discovers the treasure gives up everything they have for that one thing, that field with the treasure or that priceless pearl. Jesus piles on the examples in his parables, treasure in a field or a priceless pearl. If you're a farmer, you'll understand the field. If you're in the retail business, the pearl makes more sense to you. The point is about giving everything up to buy the field or buy the pearl. Giving up everything is an act of trust. Trust that there is this one greater good and that I can grasp it and enjoy it and live it. If the treasure buried in the field is the kingdom of heaven as we are meant to encounter it on this earth in our own field, then we are being told that the treasure is hope and trust. This treasure which expresses hope and trust is found by someone who is exploring, 
someone paying attention while wandering, someone who's looking deeply, someone who seeks to understand. In the first reading today, we have a great example of a person who seeks to understand. In the first book of Kings, the Lord appears to Solomon in a dream and says, ask something of me and I will give it to you. In modern parlance, the Lord has invited Solomon to ask for a superpower. And isn't Solomon amazing? He humbly asks for understanding, pointing to his youth and the big shoes he has to fill as the king. He emphasizes that he needs the Lord's help and he asks for understanding. The Lord responds with pleasure. You didn't ask for wealth or for long life, or for death to your enemies. You asked for understanding. We could say that already in requesting this superpower, Solomon is demonstrating his wisdom, and his wisdom will only grow richer with the gift of understanding that he has requested. So the treasure in the field that King Solomon trips over the pearl of great price he gives everything for is understanding. The Lord gives Solomon an understanding heart. In another translation, we read that the Lord gives Solomon a listening heart. In Proverbs, we read, happy the one who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. No treasure of yours can compare with wisdom. Those who hold her fast are happy. Understanding is the treasure found in the field, the pearl of great price. It is a gift with many sources. Understanding grows with experience, with knowledge, with insight and perceptiveness, with reflection and discernment. To begin and in its essence, to understand is to listen. A lack of understanding or misunderstanding comes from ignorance, which reflects a feeble use of our minds. Poor information, which might reflect a lack of discernment. And primarily, a lack of understanding comes from an inability or unwillingness to listen with an open mind and an open heart. Listening with an open heart rewards the listener with insight and knowledge and an awareness of the feelings underlying the words being spoken by another person. Being listened to is one of the gifts we give to one another. One of the ways we make this a heaven on earth. Being listened to compassionately is a great comfort in times of sadness and loss. Being listened to with openness provides an opportunity for thoughtful reflection. Being listened to patiently encourages the speaker of their worthiness. Being listened to well allows us to express our vulnerabilities without fearing mockery. Deep listening requires that we give 100% attention with no distractions, no multitasking. The attentiveness of listening is like the attentiveness of prayer. Being listened to can bring out the very best in us. An author who lived 100 years ago, it was said to speak to him was to have a sense of being listened to with such intensity that you had to be your most honest, sharpest, and best self. Susan Phillips is a sociologist and spiritual director who teaches a course in contemplative listening to graduate students in theology. She gives every group of students two assignments. One, to write a reflective paper 
on a time the student was listened to, and two, a reflective paper about a time the student listened to another person. Every year, a few students in her classes have difficulty even remembering a time when someone listened to them. But with encouragement, all are able to recall at least one brief instance of being listened to. Often that memory is of a grandparent who put aside their own activity in order to listen. Listening demands that we be intentionally attentive. Being listened to cultivates hope. Just as burying a treasure is an act of hope, I'm hopeful when someone listens to me because I know and feel that I matter to them, matter enough for them to take the time to listen with an open heart. Every child feels this when a parent stops to listen. Last week, one of the hymns we sang included a refrain that we bring hope to the hopeless. We can do this by the simple act of listening deeply. Listening cultivates relationships. As a listener, I have no agenda except to be open-hearted so I might understand. That quality, understanding, which Solomon asked for as his superpower. It's ours for the taking if we simply listen. Listening cultivates virtue in the listener. Praying is listening and being listened to. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that love of God begins with listening to his word. The beginning of love for the brethren is learning to listen to them. After he was imprisoned by the Nazis and before he was executed, Bonhoeffer ministered not only to other prisoners by listening to them, he also ministered to the guards. In their prisoner, the guards found much comfort. Even as he was dying, Jesus listened to the thief beside him. The greater good is a life in Christ to which everyone is welcome without exception. Jesus listened to the thief. He listened to beggars, to the blind, lepers, women, tax collectors, Samaritans, any outcast or marginalized person you can think of, Jesus welcomed with an open heart. That's our example. Just as Solomon is our example of what to ask for, when we get an offer from God. I've been talking about the treasure being understanding and that we seek understanding by listening to one another and to God. In 2010, World Listening Day was inaugurated in which a group was formed that devotes itself to understanding the world and its natural environment, societies, and cultures through practices of listening. Understanding through listening. There is a richness on the planet and in our universe, and all we have to do is listen for it. What interferes with listening? Being too busy is a big culprit. A time-honored way of setting our hearts to seek good is to practice keeping the Sabbath. Sabbath is embedded in spiritual wisdom and is a form of regular stopping. Simply stopping to breathe where breath is prayer. Prayer is how we live our lives. Regular stopping runs counter to our American ever moving forward, always achieving more, striving culture. Regular stopping is countercultural. And sometimes, even when it is recommended, the rationale is that it will make a person more productive in the long run. So the goal isn't stopping and resting at all, it's a greater productivity. I've moved twice in the past seven months, and each time my mover was Anderson Brothers. 
Carl Anderson is a parishioner many of you know. When a new neighbor told me she was moving and could I recommend a mover, I recommended them. She scrunched up her face and said, I called them, but I'm moving on a Sunday and they don't work on Sunday. They have learned to keep the Sabbath. Some of our parishioners have seen the pandemic as an opportunity to practice true stopping, deep resting. They have found that treasure buried in the field. They have asked for that gift of understanding given to Solomon. True stopping is giving us an opportunity to offer slow, open-hearted listening to others. We stop and listen to our environment, the birds in the garden, the wail of the ambulance, the breeze in the tree branches. One friend told me that every time she hears an emergency vehicle's bugling, she says a Hail Mary. In our listening, we are reaching out to one another, deepening our relationships, deepening our understanding deepening our lives. Amen. Thanks, Mary, for breaking open the word for us in uh, such a beautiful and uh, practical way. We'll try this week to have that understanding heart and to achieve it by listening more closely to everyone we encounter. Let us profess our faith in the living God who hears and answers our prayers in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God who satisfies our desires and answers our prayers will fulfill the needs we bring. I invite Emily Schultz and Whitney Firestone to offer our prayers of the faithful. That the church may cast a wide net, embracing people of every kind, and find common ground with those with whom we differ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations may not amass riches for their private use, but instead discern their responsibilities to the poor of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of church and state may be given wisdom in their discernment during these trying times, especially teachers, parents, and school administrators. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who work in the fields of counseling and therapy may be strengthened in their efforts as they help people move toward recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those living in distress, anxiety, and difficulty because of the coronavirus may know God's nearness and comfort, especially the sick among our families and friends. Manette Mayo, Marie Guidry, and Gloria Diaz. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead whom God called to faith and justified in baptism may now be glorified in God's kingdom especially those who have died because of the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, 
Let us bring our personal needs and intentions to God. O God, font of all wisdom, in Christ you have revealed your kingdom to us, a treasure hidden in a field, a pearl of great price. Hear our prayers and give us your discerning spirit that we may seek the treasure you alone can give. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us unite all our prayers in one as we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins or our inability to listen attentively to one another, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. And with your spirit. Those of you who are at home with family, share that peace with one another. Those of us who are praying on our own, extend that peace from our hearts. Since we cannot gather around the Lord's table in person, let us receive Jesus spiritually into our hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the, in the most, most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you and to your mystical body throughout the world. Never, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Lord, we have heard your saving word that gives us wisdom and understanding. May your unrelenting love bring us closer to our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks to everyone for joining in our prayer this morning, uh, to our lectors and readers, our musicians, to uh, Christoph and other parishioners who work behind the scenes to make our virtual gatherings uh, possible. At 1230, I'll be outside the doors, front doors of the church for anyone who wishes to uh, come and share communion. Uh, please make sure you have a mask on and you'll be placed at safe uh, distances from the others. Stay in touch with us through our parish website, our Facebook page, and our timely perpetual uh, newsletter. And thanks for your financial support of the parish uh, during this time when we can't gather publicly. This Wednesday at our town hall gathering at 7 p.m., to which everyone is invited, you connect uh, to it through the website, uh, we'll be host to Brother Mickey McGrath, a fellow oblate of St. Francis de Sales and a nationally acclaimed liturgical artist. Um, with Brother Mike, Mickey's delightful art and inspiring commentary, we're going to celebrate the Feast of St. Martha, uh, July 29th. Legend says that uh, Mary Magdalene and Martha and Lazarus, uh, after the death and resurrection of Jesus in a boat, came to the southern part of France, and each one settled there. We're going to look at that legend through Mickey's art. And one of the delightful tales about Martha is that in her village, uh, there was a dragon that was terrifying the villagers. It's a good story for those of us being terrified by the current pandemic. Well, Martha was able to tame that dragon. And so we'll look at our own dragons, inner and outer, that we need to tame during these days of upheaval and challenge. Each Friday at 10 a.m., uh, a group of parishioners gathers in this virtual mode to pray the rosary, and everyone is in, uh, invited to that. You can connect again through the parish website. 
Also, if you need any help during this difficult time, errands to run, a food delivery, uh, members of our women's ministry are eager to help. Their contact information is on the parish website. We'll close now with a hymn that uh, we're very familiar with, so you uh, sing along at home. Uh, I want to thank Ann Lagash, who uh, sent me an email uh, reminding me that uh, today, June 26, is the Feast of St. Anne and Joachim, the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that uh, those names are not in the scriptures, but they are given in later writings uh, to Mary's parents, of whom we know nothing. But the strong character of Mary in making decisions, her continuous practice of prayer, her devotion to the laws of her faith, her steadiness at moments of crisis, and her devotion to her relatives, all indicate a close-knit, loving family that looked forward to the next generation, even while retaining the best of the past. Joachim and Anna, whether those are their real names or not, represent that entire quiet series of generations who faithfully perform their duties, practice their faith, and establish an atmosphere for the coming of the Messiah, but remained obscure and in the background. So on the feast of the grandparents of uh, Jesus, I invite you to raise your hand if you're a grandparent. Uh, I don't see your hand up, Joe. Uh, jo Jolie? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, and I'm going to offer a blessing for grandparents. So take those hands and cup them to receive God's blessing for grandparents. Lord our God, you have given these faithful ones the grace to maintain their hope in you through all life's challenges and changes and to taste and see your goodness. May they find joy in their children and grandchildren, a renewed strength of spirit and good health. 
May they inspire us by the example of their serenity, trust, and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless and keep you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.